Moving on to the next scenario. So we have to take the absolute value function reflected in the x-axis, horizontally stretch it by a factor of two, and translate it down by five units. So as we did in the previous scenarios, I wrote out all these transformations in a list. So let's go through each of them and see how they affect the letters A, K, D, and C. So a reflection in the x-axis, that affects the A value. And what else affects an A value? Well, whether there's a vertical stretch or compression. And there is no vertical stretch or compression in this question. So just a reflection in the x-axis means that the A value is negative one. Now the next transformation is this horizontal stretch by a factor of two. And if you look at your cheat sheet with all of the transformations, the factor of a horizontal stretch or compression is the reciprocal of the K value. That's the relationship they have. The factor of a horizontal stretch or compression, so this two, is always the reciprocal of the K value. So since this was horizontally stretched by a factor of two, we know that the K value is the reciprocal of two, or two over one, which is one over two. And because it's not reflected in the y-axis, the k value is positive. So k is equal to 1 half. If there was a reflection in the y-axis, then the k would be negative 1 half. And then a translation five units down, that affects the c value. So c is equal to negative five. It's going down by five units. And then finally, the d value tells us whether the function gets translated to the left or right. However, in this scenario, there is no transformation like that. There is no horizontal translation, so the d value is just zero. So taking all of these values for a, k, c, and d, and then putting them in the general transformation format, we get this here. So the a value is negative one, so I just put a negative in front of the f. k value is one half, the d value is zero, and the c value is negative five. So if we simplify this, more so simplify the bracket, we would just end up with 1 half x minus 5. Now this y equals negative f of 1 half x minus 5 is just a general transformation. It could be applied to any parent function. So the parent function that we need to apply it in this scenario is this absolute value x. So y is equal to negative and then f of 1 half x, if f of x is absolute value x, f of 1 half x would be the absolute value of 1 half x. So the absolute value of 1 half x minus 5. And that's our final answer here. So this is our transform function of the parent function absolute value x through these transformations. Moving on to our last scenario, we have to take the parent function one over x, vertically stretch it by a factor of three, horizontally compress it by a factor of one over four, translate it two units to the left, and then four units up. So taking all of these transformations and writing them out in a list, let's figure out what the values for a, k, d, and c would be. So the first transformation, vertical stretch by a factor of three, that affects the A value. What else affects the A value? Well, whether it's reflected in the x-axis, and it's not reflected in the x-axis in this question, so we know that our A value is gonna be positive. So the vertical stretch by a factor of three gives us a positive value of three for A. So if the factor of the horizontal compression is one over four, then the k value is the reciprocal of that, which is four. Four over one, which is just four. And there is no reflection in the y-axis, so the k wouldn't be negative, it's just positive four. If there was a reflection in the y-axis, then this would be negative four. Translate two units to the left means that our d value is negative two, and then translate four units up means that our c value 
is positive 4. So taking all of these letters and putting them in the general transformation, the a value is 3, the k value is 4, x minus d, so the d value is negative 2, and then the c value is 4. So pay careful attention to this x minus d. It's x minus negative 2. d was negative 2, so we put it in brackets. And then this bracket here we can simplify. So if we write this out, we would have f of 4, and then x minus negative 2 gives us x plus 2 plus 4. Now this y is equal to 3f of 4, bracket x plus 2, close bracket, plus 4. This is just a general transformation, and it could be applied to any parent function. However, in this scenario, we have to apply it to 1 over x. So the way we would do that, the 3 we would just keep on the outside. And then notice if f of x is equal to 1 over x, then f of this whole bracket, we would just plug this whole bracket in for the x value. So we'd have 1 over, and instead of the x value, we would write this bracket here for bracket x plus 2. And then the plus 4, the c value of plus 4 is on the outside. And then we could simplify this even more by bringing the 3, multiplying the 3 and the 1, right? Because it's like 3 over 1. So you multiply the numerators and the denominators when you're dealing with fractions, when you're multiplying fractions. So we would end up with 3 over 4x plus 2, and then this plus 4 at the end. So this here is our transform function when the parent function is 1 over x and it goes through all of these transformations. So just as a recap, when you run into questions like this where you're given the transformations written out in words, write each one separately, list them out, and then figure out what the values for a, k, d, and c are then plug those values into the general transformation formula and then apply that general transformation formula to the parent function that you're dealing with. The biggest thing to look out for is these horizontal stretch or compressions. Remember when they give you the factor, so here the factor was 2, here the factor was 1 over 4, the k value is always the reciprocal of those factors. So this 2, the reciprocal was 1 over 2, this 1 over 4, the reciprocal was 4.